it's your girl Nima back again with another video. I have a very special guest with me today on my channel, and it is my very, very good friend Danielle, also known as Queen Danny. I'm gonna let her introduce herself. Hey, kings and queens, my name is Queen Danny. Um, I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> Where I talk about um, anything that has to do with the young professional lifestyle and reigning your life with Christ. So I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Miss Nima. I love her so much. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. We were having so much fun all day. We laugh at everything, so please excuse us. Literally. Time, because happen. we think everything's funny. We do. But we're talking about a very serious topic today. Relationships. <laughs> Okay. Relationships. Relationships. All things relationships. Friendships. What else is there? And uh, romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. Situationships. Family relationships. Mm -hmm. Everything relationships. And what it has to do with our personal relationship with Christ. And how we incorporate that relationship into our other relationships. Right. So. Where should we start? That's a great question. <laughs> like, like, I felt like we, we didn't think about so this. Guys, we didn't think this. Also, okay. Well, also, we, this is really gonna be like a laid back chat video. Usually, you're right. just gonna watch me and Nahima like t talk about our struggles, what we do with relationships, what like what we've learned so so far in life, mm -hmm. and everything through the word. Um, so this isn't anything planned. This is really like so last minute, but yeah. something we were talking about earlier today, and we thought it was. A, we thought it'd be a great idea to come on here and record and show you guys and so you guys can also chat with us in the comments let us know what you guys think i'm actually super excited to record this video me too i'm really excited okay because we've been waiting for so long and Legit. she lives in texas oh yeah i live in dallas texas so, so yeah. comment down below if you're from texas <laughs> oh. all right <laughs> so um i think we should all just address the elephant in the room right singleness singleness are you single because i'm taken Sorry, I thought you were gonna say by Jesus. I, I'm gonna get there. I'm taken by my Lord and Savior Christ Christian. Jesus Christ. Yes, ma'am. Okay, listen to me. The Holy Spirit is buying to me. We have become one. So technically, I'm not single. I live with the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. I'm single. So if you know anybody that with like sis, drink some water. Drink daddy some water. She like, thirsty. Let her drink some water. Oh my gosh. If you know anybody with daddy vibes, dark skin, beard, you know, muscular, Christian, wow. carry around his Bible. <laughs> You're too much for me. All right. All right. Okay, now, nah, all singleness. Seriously, I feel like we, singleness, as soon as you hear that word, it has such a negative connotation. Yes. It's like, oh, you're single. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this it's such... Negative negativity associated with that word mm -hmm. in our generation. Yeah, because I totally it's such a agree. big deal. Of like, okay, the usually the question that follows is why, mm -hmm. and it's weird because when you say you're in a relationship, people don't ask why. They don't. They're like, they're like, oh my god, I'm seeing pictures. Yeah. Oh my god, which is great, but the exactly. problem is that like we idolize people in a relationship and we kind of like deplete people who are not in a relationship. Yeah. And like, I have learned that like I actually watched this sermon by what's his name? You know, this pastor. Pastor to my Todd, oh, and he talked about, yes. oh my yes. gosh, yes. Yeah, that's him, yes. amazing. Um, it was a series called Relationship Gold, and he explained I that singleness, that. yeah, singleness is like the most important time of your life, and seriously, like, the, okay, I'm single too, yeah. <laughs> and for the past year that I've been single, I've really been able to understand that, especially where I am, like, my, my spiritual growth, um, because it's really your time to, like, be whole with yourself, like, take time and read the word, get closer to God, and, like, that's, like, so common people say that, but, like, really be in the word, really be fellowship yeah. with the Holy Spirit, really be praying about your life, really be asking God to reveal the things to you that you need to know for your life, like, when people say, um, you should wake up and, like, you know, have an appointment with God, that stuff is real, like, because he's really gonna reveal to you what you should, what kind of decisions you're gonna make that day, what is upcoming, like, it's like your daily check, and if you don't have it, 
you kind of don't have guidance for the day and that's something i can really attest to um and something that i, I have been able to do so freely because you know when your relationship like oh who, who texted me or yeah. let me call him the like morning, as soon as you, or, you, whatever, you look think about phone. him yeah. and even now like with social media that's been super hard to not to go to social media when i wake up yeah. but um i think being single is like such a good time to put yourself first and you don't and not feel bad about it right yeah. and yeah. really focus about focus on your family whatever it has to do whatever you feel like you have to um, fix in your life, you know, whatever you feel like you need to like make whole. I feel like sing when you're single, the time to do yeah. that, and you don't feel bad about it. Yeah. And the why it's important, why it's so important is because while you're single, you're doing all those things, you're becoming your own self, you're loving yourself and all that. And now when you get in a relationship, you have so much love to give. Like mm -hmm. I feel like the problem. Oh, I'm chatting. I'm chatting right now. Take it away. Like, I feel like the problem with like. A lot of relationships is that you know you get in a relationship and you think, oh, what can I get? You know, what what is what can he do for me? Um, what can he buy for me? Where can he take me? But you should really go in a relationship thinking, what can I do for him? What can I give him? Because you have already received all the love that you need from from your Savior Jesus Christ. You shouldn't need you shouldn't need any other love on top of it. But it's great to have it. So yeah. it's great to be so like love like for love to be complimented. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I'm so thankful that I've been able to work on because when that time does come, when the time is right, I'm going to be able to give so much love yeah. and I'm going to be able Without to enhance the other whole person. I don't want, I'm not a half, like, you know, I'm a whole and I'm going to come together with him one day and we're going to be a, a greater whole. We're not yeah. going to be, oh, one whole just because we can come together now. So I'm just so excited to be single and like be like praising the Lord and like just growing in the faith because this is like the time to do it for yeah. sure. Seriously. Yeah. I still agree with that. I think that also, like, we were talking about this earlier over breakfast about soul ties. And I feel like being, when you're in a season of singleness, that's yeah. the best time to work on breaking soul ties. Yes. Like, Girl, I just like, opened a whole book right there, okay? <laughs> it kind of sounds like, like a mission. Like, like I break these break soul, soul ties. ties. <laughs> So like what, yeah, so like, so like, what is a soul tie? Do you even understand what exactly. it means? Like how do you counter those? Well, y'all better Google that because mm, well, it's a real the, thing, y'all. To put thing. it in short, a soul yeah. tie is basically like a bind that you share with with another soul, whether it be a friend, a family member, um, a romantic partner, and um, a sexual partner. Like there's so many different kind of soul ties. But in our culture, soul ties are only regarded as negative things, and soul ties are not always, like we were literally talking about this earlier, and I'm so happy we were, yeah. because Danny helped me realize like soul ties aren't always negative, or they're not always unhealthy. Cause I feel like whenever we're talking about it, we're like, damn, I gotta break this soul tie with this guy. Like I'm celibate, like you know, like I have a soul tie. But sometimes we don't even recognize it, whatever. But we sure feel it all the time. And I think it's always negative, but it's not always a negative thing because God intended for us to have a soul tie with our, our husband, partner, our wife, our partner. You know, when we have sex with them, and that's such an intimate act, and right. that creates a soul tie because sex is sex is a very very powerful act, and that's one way to guarantee like a soul tie. With someone. I think that's a great segue into what we were talking about earlier about like um, sex isn't something that's supposed to be bad. It's only supposed to be meant in like one medium, right? And then when you do have to with someone continuously, you do create that soul tie with them. And like you said, they're not always bad and God intended us to have a soul tie with our partners so that we would always go back to them. Like, exactly. you know, so it would make it easier for us to work out problems because we just have a deeper connection that you can't explain. Because I feel like that's what a soul tie is, right? Like, most of you don't know what it's just like. You're just like, I don't get going back to him because I don't, I don't know why. It's just something about him, or it's not the way he looks, just the way I feel. It's just something about him that I, yeah, I feel so, so connected to, and it's like out, it's like beyond the physical. Like it's like deeper than that, and that's like you know your soul. So I, I really think that God intended for that to only be with one person, and that's why you know we should wait till we get married to have sex but the good news is that there's grace there's grace and there's repentance you know and if you know like the power that you have in Christ you really can go and go oh, in yeah, prayer absolutely. and battle for it and break these soul ties and God will break them which is like the best part about it all like it's not all over when you yeah, create right. one like right. just like when you become you're a Christian like, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> people are like you're doomed like, you're that is so not true mm -hmm. like you can have a lot of past sexual partners and 
you can at any moment you can decide to be a different person yes. you can commit to that decision mm -hmm. and like she said prayer truly works like I literally Girl, was looking yes. at prayers on Pinterest when I wanted to break soul ties with sexual partners in the past that I just didn't want to keep going back to mm -hmm. so those prayers really work and like you can reach out to I know sometimes it's hard and not everyone has a good relationship with their church or their pastor but I'm pretty sure there's one person at least one in your life like that is a light in your life and that you can say like hey like maybe I can go to this person and that's why it's so important for like us to walk in our calling and our purpose Amen. because like you sometimes that you're the only light in someone's life and they can reach out to you and say like hey can you help me like you know break this soul tie or it's not maybe not exactly that but like hey I'm like I'm really struggling with this like can you right. please help me like can you pray with me like it's so much easier to pray with someone else like it's very hard to pray by it. I, I mean no it's not very hard sorry but it I in the find beginning it, as you're still growing like, yeah exactly I do find it easier like to pray with somebody else like, we just pray. and it's great to do yeah, that and it's great it's really great like which is why you should incorporate it into your relationships and your friendships mm, that part. because and friendships too like it's not only like oh i gotta pray with my husband or i'm praying for my husband like you should pray for your friends you should mm -hmm. pray with your friends yeah like when y'all hanging out before y'all go out like it may sound weird but we need to start incorporating <laughs> god more into our culture mm -hmm. and more into our everyday, just life. everyday life yeah like we need to stop making it seem like he we need to stop putting him in, in a box and acting like he's just supposed to stay in the church mm -hmm. like the church is supposed to be out here like you know in the streets like, sometimes the church is scared to like go out in the streets but i feel like um, it's very important for us to just start normalizing god and like having a personal relationship with him like it's not you don't have to be like, oh, I, I have to get right before I come to God. Like, I have to do this. Mm. Right before, you know, like, you get I have right to right my God. wrongs. Like, you know, right. like, you don't have to do any of that. Like, it's just. Mm -hmm. And it's so great, man, because, like, when you come to God, to tie it back around, like, you. Your relationship is so much better. Mm. I feel like you have more clarity. I feel like um, it's more transparency in your relationship. You're not afraid to be more vulnerable with people. I feel like you um, could connect better, communicate better. So a lot of things are just like so much better. And also to segue to that, you mentioned something about like um, being able to pray with your friends. Um, this is something that is so important as well. It's like you need to like we were talking about, you know, friendship and relationships in general. Like just watching who you hang out with and um, making sure that there are those people who are like filling you up and not necessarily always draining you. Like it's great to be a blessing. It's great to be like a light in someone's life. But if you don't have other light in your life, you know, to fill you up, especially like friendships, you're also gonna fall into whatever they're falling into, like whatever problems they're they are having really so having the problems too yeah, because yes. if that's all you like surround yourself with that becomes real toxic so you know and that goes back to soul time if you can be a soul time you can have a soul time with a friend because you spend too much time with them and it's great you know to have other friends and everything but it's like so hard sometimes especially when you're not like really strong in your faith yet to like go and have friends who aren't really serious about that and like are leading you towards doing things that you would normally do um but because oh whatever you don't be Debbie down or you're gonna go and do it and like yeah. peer pressure and all these things are like real things so like yeah, it's been out. yeah it's been a challenge <laughs> to um like just kind of like look at my friends who I surround myself with who I choose to spend time with and think like okay if I'm still struggling at this part of my life I'm gonna choose not to hang out with people this part of time you know, so I can use my time to get closer to God so I can get stronger and then I can come and be that light in your life, right? And then help you through whatever you're helping through. Because you can't help someone like that's going through something that you're going through. Like, you just can't do it. Like that's why people have testimonies, right? And then they come and then they help you with whatever they got through. But if we're going if we both go through the same thing, if we both blind, I'm not gonna tell you to see if I can't see, right? It, right? And that's so huge when it comes to friendships, man. And it can be like a really like hard decision to make. But again, like I feel like once you choose this life of faith, like there's some things that you have to sacrifice. And yes. friends is a huge one, especially being a young adult. It's it's so hard to just be. Yeah, like, being a young you person know. in general, I think, mm -hmm. because as a young person, like we often seek validation and reassurance mm -hmm. from friends mm -hmm. and from just anything external really like we don't validation yeah but... validation like as we get older we realize okay like everything i ever needed was in me mm -hmm. and i'm like still young too so like i'm still learning this i may know it but it's another thing to like live it and believe it yeah but i know like as you get older you kind of you have that reassurance of like wow like i really like have everything i need like i have all the answers and sometimes we like look for answers 
from my friend or a family or anything like and then the last resource is usually like God and I so just you so know true. but it's so amazing how like as you get older you're like wow like I really don't need any of this validation or reassurance and I think we seek that in friends sometimes but like Danny was saying it's dangerous because like friend, like if a friend is going through what you're going through, which a lot of times it is like that. It's like okay, yeah, like, it's like oh, I want to this me too, girl. Like I'm struggling. You can have those me too friends. Let me tell you, <laughs> if your friend is telling you me, me too, too, it's time to go to somebody else about it. Like yeah. it's like oh me too, oh my god, yeah. so sad. Like no, you guys are going to tell you. The word of God says this, you are a light, you are more than a conqueror, you can get through this, you have the mind of Christ. You need, you need someone yeah, who's going to be able to pour those pour things life into, into your, your spirit. So, so you understand, I don't have to go through this, I'm going to pick myself up, you know, and go to God about this. I'm going to fight this battle because I have already won this battle. I just have to realize that in my life, like, you can have, you speak, oh yeah, we both going through the same thing, just hear <laughs> Kanye, like, that's not, that's not that's right. right. You need that friend that's going to be like, get up. Mm -hmm. Hold my hand. <laughs> I was gonna say get on your knees. Oh, that sounds kind of weird. <laughs> I mean for prayer. <laughs> like get on your knees. Yeah, we gonna pray this to out. God. You are more than a conqueror to Christ who loves yes. you. You have divine power to cast down strongholds. You are. You have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. You can do all things. Not some things. Mm -hmm. All one things. Thing, not one thing at a time. <laughs> all things through Christ who strengthens you. Like, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what season of your life you're in. And I think that's, like, mentorship falls into the category of relationships. Because it's like, you have, like, your family, yes, your friends, your business partner, but then you have those mentors where it's like, it's a person that you can just look to for that guidance. That's like, yo, mm -hmm. oh, of course, typically they're older because you need someone with them that's mm -hmm. been through it. So, like, yo, I went through this, and even if I didn't make the right decision, at least now I can tell you to, mm -hmm. like, how to make this right decision. I can guide you to the, to the best decision for you. Mm -hmm. But you also want that person that's gonna guide you to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Like not that person that is either gonna keep you stagnant or like Danny was said, just feed into your misery. Cause like misery loves company. It's human nature. Mm -hmm. Like we we get comfort from knowing someone else is going through what we're going through. Mm -hmm. But it's not good when we're feeding off each other's misery and like we're both just stuck in the same place. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely encourage anyone like that that doesn't have a mentor, like to seek out a mentor, like whether it's in the church or even outside of the church. Like there's a lot of Christians that don't go to church, so some people are still um, have a strong walk with God, you know, like. But you know, like, what, pray on it. But I definitely encourage mentorship because mentors would definitely be that person to pour into you. I feel like a lot of a lot of people in our generation feel drained all the time, like yes. empty and yes. like sad and that's because a lot of times we're pouring out so much energy into things that should not into people that should not have our time and energy mm -hmm. and we feel so weird we're like oh i don't know i feel this why is god doing this to me like, yeah that part <laughs> why is god doing this to me is this you control your own life you can't blame god for what is going on in your life i really hate that <laughs>